Hey, Kev, how are you? Round three. Round three. We were here at nine. Great show. Eleven. Great show. Here we are, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we've uh, got another great group of vendors to share with us all about uh, combating uh, food inflation with some, some great uh, ideas to implement in, you, in your restaurant. Um, the one thing I was doing some research, Kevin, I did find that um, according to uh, Canada's food price report, that they're forecasting the overall um, food price increase to be 3 to 5% for this year. Um, with some of the more significant price increases being in meat, uh, bakery, and vegetables. So. Well, and and I, I know canola, I don't know if that falls into the vegetable or the grains or whatever, but that yeah. obviously, we talked about that in the last group about fryer oil and that sort of thing. So, man, it's, uh, you get, but here's the thing, there are solutions and we are all part of it. And these, these chefs and vendors that are part of this are part of it. And we are part of the, we can be part of the solution. For sure. Well, let's roll the intro and get started. Just by that intro. Oh man, that's it. Might be one. No, no offense to any other ones, but that might be one of our best ones yet. You got it. All right. Well, let's bring in our vendors and chefs, and uh, let's meet who we're going to be chatting with today. All right. Let's. Uh, I'm going to start uh, maybe over Lynch. at. I think we were going to start with Lynch. We're there go we go. This. Yeah. There we go. Hey there. And hey, that is an awesome intro. That thing kicks butt. It just gets you grooving. Gets you moving, I love it. Hey, Steve McGoy here from Lynch Foods, and thank you once again for having me on this show. It is a juggernaut of a topic. Uh, I have to commend the first two groups that have gone through today. They've done a wicked job. This is a, this is a beast to tackle. Uh, and I've got a couple concepts that I'd like to, uh, like to share today. The first one that I'm gonna share with you in an effort to combat food inflation is looking at comfort food. Comfort food's a big trend that's coming back and very popular as they forecast 2022. So I'm gonna look at a great comfort food dish, but elevating it to a, a level that you'd wanna see in your restaurant, not by adding extra cost, not by making it more difficult, but just working what you have in your kitchen. So comfort food's the first one. And then the second one I'm gonna do has to do with re-engineering an appetizer, an existing appetizer and engineering it to make it a more casual plate or a small plate. So sort of in that segment between appetizer and entree, but using something you already have. So again, it's not going out and buying new ingredients. It's working with what you got, but creating something really cool. So comfort food and re-engineering are my two topics that I can't wait to share with you. Love it. All right. Yep. Chef Marvin. Well, thank you, Steve. I mean, this was playing right into uh, to what we're doing. Uh, pierogies being a, a big comfort food. And once again, uh, as, as uh, Steve said, you know, using ingredients that you already have in your kitchen. So I'm going to go through a few different sauces, different combinations of, uh, of uh, plates, plate presentations. Uh, nothing off the wall. Everything is something in existence. And uh, hopefully, hopefully uh, an encouragement of, of restaurants to uh, utilize uh, any leftovers that they might have after a lunch and special or whatever, uh, put a few pierogies on it, serve it with a different sauce and uh, 
you know, we'll talk about that. Uh, we have customers that are serving up pierogies 40 different ways. Basically, whatever they put on a, on a wing, they put on a pierogi and uh, the customers ha have that choice and that opportunity. And of course, uh, you know, with a cost of less than 11 cents uh, for the large pierogi, down to eight cents and, and five and six cents, uh, very economical. And uh, we hope to uh, help people out and uh, give them some ideas. All right, looking forward to it. Chef Brian. Hi, everybody. Um, Chef Brian from Rosina Foods. We're going to talk about Cisco Arizio meatballs today and just how versatile they can be across all different menu applications, whether it's some comfort food, the traditional Italian style, uh, kids menus uh, used in uh, poutine topping or even in tacos. So um, I got a couple dishes that I'm going to walk through and then I'll just talk about the highlights of the meatballs that uh, Cisco carry carries. And then also show you some dishes that I assembled uh, previously showing just, you know, how you could take a simple meatball and cover it across multiple places on the menu. Awesome. Great idea. And then last but certainly not least, Chef Peter in the house. How you doing today, everybody? So some of the dishes that I chose today about fighting inflation, some of them you're going to finish yourself. Some of them we're going to uh, take some products that are already perfectly finished. But we'll walk through a, a plethora of uh, Cisco branded products that can really help you uh, not just combat inflation, but to actually make some great bottom line and have some great fun doing it. So really looking forward to bringing you some of these creative dishes. Easy on the labor, easy on the food costs, and very exciting for your customers. So it's going to be awesome. All right. Thanks, Chef Pete. All right, let's go to commercial and then we'll be back and get started. Cisco is Canada's leading restaurant supplier with more than 14 locations across the country, servicing every province and territory. We are grateful for our partnerships and proud to service our customers from St. John's, Newfoundland to Victoria, BC. With the most distribution sites in Canada, we are recognized for our national reach and local connection. Cisco services every community size, from every major city to every small town. We are relentlessly innovating to ensure you have the products and services you need, no matter your location, with a coverage area that's continuously expanding. A partnership with Cisco guarantees access to the industry's best distribution network, keeping you on trend and stocked with fresh products and fresh ideas. Cisco Canada provides a broad range of food and non-food products to both independent and chain restaurant customers and other away from home locations such as healthcare and educational facilities. No matter your cuisine type or culinary capabilities, we can help. Our products are sourced locally in Canada and within our specialized global network of responsible suppliers. Our categories include meat and poultry, seafood, dairy, produce, bakery and desserts, food service supplies, beverages, specialty and world food products, and pantry staples. Locally focused, our regional teams provide the hands-on customer service that sets us apart, ensuring you have what you need when you need it. Visit cisco.ca to learn more. All right. Take us Steve. away, Chef Steve. This first dish, as I mentioned before, is all about comfort food. And you know what? This dish just screams for this segment because it was literally invented or developed with affordability and simplicity in mind. So a perfect, perfect dish for this segment. The dish is called a loco moco, and it's a Hawaiian dish, which was created back in the 40s, literally by teenagers who went to a restaurant and said, I need something that I can afford that's not a sandwich, and it can be prepared quickly and effortlessly. And so the chefs at the restaurant created this dish and essentially, you know, as a purist would say, it's rice with a burger, some onions and gravy. Pretty simple. Comfort food, tastes delicious, fulfilling, satisfying. So I wanted to take that concept and sort of elevate it a little bit, take it sort of to that next level. Again, not by adding a lot of cost or difficulty, but just bringing it to sort of restaurant life, if you will. And the sauce that I'm gonna use uh, for this is the Jade Mountain Sweet and Sour Sauce, which is perfect for the flavors you're going to see as you develop this, kind of that Hawaiian uh, sort of feel. So here we go. 
I'm going to bring in a little closer so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to start with the board because I love putting food on boards. brings out the color in the food. I'm going to start with rice. Someone in one of the earlier sessions uh, made a great point about keeping uh, ends of cauliflower and making a cauliflower rice as opposed to using a regular rice. So that's what I've done here. I've just made a very simple cauliflower rice. I've given it a really quick saute, seasoned nicely with a little salt and pepper, and that becomes sort of your base or your carrier for this dish. And as you start to see, it's not going to be difficult to put together. It's just about adding layers of flavor and color. The second ingredient that goes on this is some pickled radish. So again, some nice crunch. Radish is plentiful. It's inexpensive. Often can be found in your pantry because it's part of a salad. But pickled radish, again, you can use the ends, whatever you'd like, adding some crunch, adding some great color to that dish as well. I'm going to bring that back so I don't... Uh... There we go. Then, as we continue to build, I'm going to make a little layer of cucumber. Okay, the cucumber, again, is going to help with a little bedding for our next, uh, our next topping. Okay, so that's a little, little bed there. Before I put on my next, I'm just going to season this. A little furikake seasoning. Essentially fancy Japanese seasoning salt. That looks great. Add some color. Then, I'm going to place a chicken burger on the top. I've made this ahead of time. Okay, and inside that chicken burger contains some water chestnuts and more of that Jade Mountain sweet and sour sauce. It's fantastic. A lot of people have used beef in the past. Again, the purest way of making this dish. But a chicken burger is just a nice alternative and a way to sort of elevate um, this dish as you move forward. All right, I'm going to continue to build. I'm going to add some caramelized onions over the top of this. Absolutely delicious. Okay, over the top of the dish like you see there. And then avocado. I'm just going to take a little avocado that I've halved. Grab my knife. Cut some pieces off. Give her a little fan. Okay, on top of that caramelized onion, which is beautiful. And then the final piece, which is really cool, is a sunny side up fried egg. And that goes over the top just like there. See if she'll balance for me. Maybe, maybe not. We're live and there's no toothpicks here. All right. Well, there you go. Garnish, you got it. Garnish it off with a little tomato. Oh, there she goes. You know what? That just adds to the dish. Green onions, some microgreens, and boom. You've got yourself a really cool, casual, comfort food. You've got a little burger in there. You've got some cauliflower, a fried egg, lots of protein, not a lot of cost here. These are very common ingredients that you're going to find in your kitchen. So uh, just a little take on um, a way to be not fancy, not more expensive, but taking comfort to a new level. People are looking for that. They're looking for wholesome, comfortable food that's recognizable. And with the flavors that are in here and using ingredients that you have in-house, You've just delivered that experience. So, so that was my take on a loco moco, a little elevated, but uh, paying homage to its, uh, its, its uh, founders back in Hawaii. Really great dish. Absolutely delicious. So Steve, first thing, love the name. I think that is catchy. <laughs> yeah. um, but one of the things we had talked about in uh, one of the previous sessions um, is, you know, when we're constructing a dish is picking the right um, plate or bowl or whatever. But yep. something else and kind of when you were building it that made me, you know, I thought about is, is that height factor when we're creating a dish and how that the perception of the of the of the eater is what they have of that dish. Right. And that absolutely to that value perception um, of, of what they're ordering. For sure. I mean, people eat with their eyes first. So if you mm -hmm. have a beautiful looking dish that has some height, that's got some color, it's got some panache and you're walking through the halls of your restaurant, that's going to draw attention. People are going to say hey, I want one of those. What is that? Right. And so right. really important. It's a great point, Amy. Um, height is great. If you can achieve it, that's fantastic. It just lends itself and really helps the food sing as you're cooking it, and as you're plating it, and as you're delivering it to your, to your guest. So it was, uh, I think somebody referenced the fajita effect. 
Yeah, well, for sure. The symbol. I that that was pretty deep. What you guys discussed there. All I thought about the whole time was everybody's looking for a brand new dish <laughs> now. Come on, Chef Steve, make the local go. You got it. Of course, on you to the, <laughs> to the next person. Oh, Kevin, for you, you can ad lib there that you're the best. <laughs> All right, let's head over to Chef Marvin. All right. Well, uh, we're going to show some pierogies. Obviously, uh, we have four different kinds, four different sizes of pierogies today. I'm focusing on the two smaller sizes. Uh, we're looking at the snack size, which, or the Cisco Mini, as we call it. And I've done a breakfast with pierogi on it. And just to liven it up a little, we'll put a little bit of maple syrup. Believe it or not, this maple syrup really adds to the breakfast. And uh, the cost on those babies is about five and a half, six cents each. So it's uh, it's it's a cost that's not exorbitant. It's it's uh, doable. Uh, these I've actually pan fried. I'm going to be showing several other ones uh, that I've deep fried. And uh, part of the point of that is that two and a half minutes in a deep fryer. If you're short of staff, here's an appetizer. This one sells at $10.99. You've got a cost of of, of uh, about say, uh, five six cents each, so that's sixty cents for the pierogies. A little bit of garnish and a little bit of sour cream. Ten ninety nine. Like, how can you not make a dollar at that? And uh, deep fried, two and a half minutes in a fryer, so you don't have to have a qualified chef to to present that plate. Um, and of course, you only take out what you use. You don't have to defrost, don't have to hold the product. It comes directly out of the freezer, two and a half minutes in the fryer. The other thing about frying, deep frying, the pierogies do not absorb the oil. So they really don't compromise the, uh, the, the fryer to any great extent. Uh, virtually absorb nothing. So they just form a nice little crust on the outside. So as I say, the the other quick way, of course, is to boil them. Uh, not everybody has, you know, time for all that, but boiling them, drop them in boiling water. These little puppies probably come up in about two and a half minutes as well. So uh, you can you can pan fry them, you can deep fry them, and you can bake them in the oven. But uh, that's that's a big big deal there. Uh, I've done another plate up with with what we call our Buffet best, and you can read the note there. And this is an offering that uh, quite a number of our uh, customers are serving and giving away as, as freebies to people with takeout orders. So, to that one, of course, you can add a little bit of green onion on top just to give it a little bit more color. And of course, if you want to do a sour cream drizzle on top. So here we are, it can be a takeout or it can be an in-house special. And uh, those are my three items for this, this round. I think that you hit on a, a, some, some good key points there, uh, Chef Marvin. You know, I think one of the things that we've been talking about throughout the day is the, you know, obviously is controlling food costs, which, you know, low co a lower cost items such as these um, can help support um, managing those costs. Uh, but we also talked about um, the idea or the concept of ensuring that we're perfecting our portions. And so when you have like um, items like this, where you can, they're, they're easily counted out um, as to what goes into the dish. Um, and you're right, low, uh, lower skilled labor can um, execute this in, in any, any place um, as well. So uh, great ways to support that and you know being the marketing person i love the little added note in the in that dish it was a great idea thank you and on on that note we also have customers that are doing up platters or basket or plates like this for their christmas takeout uh, turkey dinners okay so rather than just you know having potatoes and, and turkey uh, we have we have several restaurants or hotels in in the city here that uh that are actually sending those out as part of their Christmas package. So 
another idea. Great ideas. Thank you Super. so much. Thank you. All right, let's go over to Brian. Sure. So we're going to make a uh, quick dish using the Arizio all beef meatball. We do offer three meatballs. There's an all beef, a beef and chicken, and then a beef with no cheese, no breadcrumb, which is naturally gluten free. So, like we said, when I said earlier during the introduction, um, you know, meatballs can be versatile. It's not just for pasta dishes. So we're going to make a little uh, firecracker meatball ball. We're going to call it. So I'm going to start here. ingredients in order. I have some sriracha, some mayo, sour cream, all ingredients that are pretty common in back of house restaurants. So we're just going to make a quick dipping sauce in our bowl here. We take about a half a cup of sour cream, a couple tablespoons of mayo, and then depending on how spicy you want to make it, the firecracker part, some sriracha, and then as well, I get my pan hot, I'm gonna add a little sesame oil, and then I got some nice shiitake mushroom, and then some green beans that I parboiled earlier. So if you have any leftover, uh, you know, like Chef Steve said, any ends of carrots, uh, celery, um, even, you know, cauliflower, broccoli stems, that type of thing. You could saute those up, add them to your bowl. So we're just gonna whisk this together. And we'll set that aside. And since these are one ounce meatballs, just like Chef Marvin was mentioning about the pierogies, these are very easy to control for your uh, portion size and food cost. So we'll put, uh, six ounces of protein in our bowl. So these are meatballs that come fully cooked. They're IQF frozen, shelf life of a year. Of a year. So they're gonna help you with your, your labor savings. Your uh, kitchen staff doesn't need to be uh, expert chefs. They can um, simply pull these out, reheat them in an oven, or they can be slacked out in a refrigerator for a couple of days. So my pan's starting to sizzle. These meatballs were uh, baked at 300 for 10 minutes. Um, so I'm just gonna add them back into this pan here to let them get hot. And then I have some jasmine rice that I steamed off earlier. So we'll add this to the bowl. Uh, then I have some bean sprouts. So you can really mix and match what you want to put in here, what's available to you locally, um, you know, in your what's in the kitchen as far as using those extra ends of vegetables. So we're just going to reheat the beans. This will probably good. Make a nice pile there. And then at the end. We'll take our firecracker sauce and we'll just put a little bit over top of the meatballs. We'll give those a swirl around to coat them. Okay. And we'll add those right in there. And then to add a little extra heat, we got some red chili and then there you go so there's one way to quickly use your Arizio beef meatballs like I said you can also use the beef and chicken which are 0.5 ounce size so you know imagine this you could serve it in your restaurant as a meal with any side would also make a great takeout item for carry out um, that looks delicious very Delicious. well done. And it, yeah, it would be right up there with any of the any of the top bowls. Yeah. And bowl, um, bowls are huge right now, popular. I mean, we're here in the actually we're from the United States here in Buffalo, New York, so we are seeing more and more bowls pop up on all of our uh either food truck menus, 
a, a lot of local restaurants here offering them as lunch options, dinner options, uh, gr meal services where you can order your meals ahead of time. They'll either drop them off at your front door or you can go pick them up. And um, they're coming up with some really great ideas. And, um, you know, this meatballs are, like I said, they're, they can be used for more than just the traditional fashion. And, you know, we're going to share some more ideas here in, in a little bit. Um, over the last few um, concepts here, we've kind of touched on a few different topics. We've talked about portioning, you know, with the progies, we could, that's easily portionable. Meatballs are the same thing. There are things that can be counted out and portioned properly. Um, you and Steve have talked about uh, reducing waste um, and using ends and things like that. Um, so when we look at waste and, you know, we kind of maybe predominantly focus on the back of the house, but we also need to consider looking at waste in the front of the house and, and monitoring those dishes that are coming back. Uh, you know, are all your guests finishing their entire plates? Are they leaving a lot of food on the table? Do you adjust what actually ends up going out to begin with um, on the plate to the, to the customer? Um, and then making sure that you're kind of looking at your waste reduction that way as well. All right, on to Chef Peter. Oh, excellent. Fantastic. So in these two dishes that we're doing kind of simultaneously, it's going to be about uh, appetizers and the lunch style feature. So the main the main ingredient here is to talk about this, uh, this beautiful steak, and it's a clod cut steak, and it's very economical. So what we've done is it's actually part of your preparation where it's cooked uh, medium rare and then used in our appetizer dish, along with uh, what we're going to do is to make the tacos that are going to be for, for lunch. So you can see I've laid out a few things here and got some uh, of our, our, our sort of little preparation already done. But again, already ready to go produce. So we're using the coleslaw in the bag. We're using uh, arugula that I just marinated a little bit here. And again, it was almost no prep at all except for cutting the lines. And then, of course, uh, we wanted to talk about a great fire roasted salsa. So this salsa has no vinegar, no sugars, no binders. It's a classic canty. So the first thing that we were doing here was we were using uh, our Jade Mountain uh, uh, tempura batter, and we made the onion rings that you can see here. So the important part of what I wanted to show you here is that these are already done, and we're going to put the hot steak and stuff on top of here in just a minute. This is one onion. So in the value of what you see here, we have about three orders of onion rings that we've already been able to do all the preparation ahead of time. It doesn't take a lot of labor. You dunk it in the batter and you cook it off for about three minutes. And here it is ready to go to be used. So what I'm going to do uh, for this appetizer is I'm going to use only about half this steak. So only four ounces of steak is actually going to go into this dish. You say it's four ounces of steak is quite a bit. Well, actually, this is a sharing appetizer. But this steak is probably, uh, you know, selling for around $5, you know, give or take, right? And it's important for us to kind of understand uh, the value of the ingredients that we're seeing here. So we're doing our twist on steak and mushrooms. So we're taking half of the steak. I got it in my preheated frying pan here. And, uh, and the mushrooms. Okay. And basically what we were doing is we had our order of onion rings. We were going to build them in the bowl here. And we all know the expense of, uh, of an onion ring. I thought this was a great one about uh, fighting inflation. And we got a great uh, the Cisco Classic barbecue sauce here that we're going to use to dress the onion rings with and put a little bit of that on the actual steak itself. Okay. So, and, and Peter, that is like, what, a quarter? Like That looks like maybe a quarter of that onion. It, and that's what I'm, I'm saying, Kevin, really. It's, uh, whether it's individual or not, it is about a quarter of the onion. Wow. Uh, and this was just one of the, the colossal yellow onions that we used. So there's the steak and mushrooms. We sort of just reheated. So there's no doneness to this steak. Just tell the folks it comes medium, it's ready, so low on the skill, done ahead of time. We just sauce up the steak and the mushrooms. We put it right on top of this dish. I'll show it to you in just a sec here. So you got a great steak and mushroom onion ring appetizer. You know, you got a little bit of some sour cream going on there. Finish it up for the bar. A little bit of some green onions, maybe a little bit of parsley, that kind of stuff. But, oh, and I saved all the nibs and crunchies because people love that stuff. So there was a great way to have a, an incredible little onion steak and mushroom uh, onion ring appetizer. Wow. Now, 
tacos have really come around in the last little bit. So you can see that one there a little bit. I'll get some stuff on it. But the idea here was we used a cucumber wasabi dressing instead of mayonnaise so we get a lot of flavor. Now, this was something I didn't have to build ahead of time. The reason is that I don't have the coleslaw mixed and falling down. We're just taking the ingredients and we're building it. But this is a breakfast. This is steak and eggs. And the reason I wanted to show steak and eggs was it's one of the most popular dishes for breakfast. It also commands the most money. So we're going to use only two eggs in this entire dish. I scrambled them up already here ahead of time. I mean, I built the one, so there it is, ready to go. Put the egg right on the on the uh, the flour tortilla. Right, that simple. We had our other steak that was here, dressing it. And there's the other four ounces going on three tacos. So that's an ounce and a quarter on each taco. It looks like a, a lot of uh, a lot of meat again. Carried carried really really well, uh, and being able to show value because something like this is selling for around fourteen to sixteen dollars. And we have a half a steak. We have two eggs. But the other thing is convenience. So we have this great avocado pulp. So it's just avocados, it's unseasoned, but there's no ripening of the avocado. There's no wastage of, of auto avocado. So basically you just open the package and you dress your tacos and they're ready to go, okay? So this to me was, was just a fabulous way to take a look at being able to finish or dress a, a taco plate. Use a fire roasted salsa here. You can leave it on the side. You can put it right on depending on, you know, what you're looking for for a uh, presentation for your customers. But just something like that there. These flour tortillas, very economical. Now, again, what's happening with flour tortillas? Well, if you have a little apparatus like this, and normally you would be deep frying the corn ones, but I'm deep frying the flour ones because it fits and travels perfectly in my takeout container. I have perfectly crispy flour tortillas that can be stuffed with the same kind of fillings that I have right here. So, again, simple, easy, profitable. I also took uh, some of the pinto beans and I made a vegetarian refried bean. So again, more protein, big flavor, finish this off, excellent. And then again, whether or not you're gonna put a little sour cream on these babies or not, it's just ready to go, finished. Nothing but money, easy on the staff, great on, uh, great on the uh, customer's uh, perception of value. So. And again, back to the nibs. Here's the tempera nibs. Sprinkle them on. They're ready to go. So again, another great dish. Very trendy. Very popular. Easy. Low, low uh, skill. Uh, lots, of, lots of profitability for something like this, costing probably around uh, three and a half dollars to uh, to dress up. That was fantastic. <laughs> like great ideas. <laughs> <It's> amazing. <laughs> I, I, Amy, are we going to go to another commercial here? Yeah. We are. We'll go to a commercial and we'll come back. At Lynch Foods, we're passionate about flavor. As a Canadian custom manufacturer, we've been developing high quality products for our customers for over 80 years. Sauces, dressings, gravy and soup mixes, Toppings and syrups for ice cream and milkshakes. All in packaging ranging from individual portions to retail and bulk formats. For food service, healthcare, or as industrial ingredients, our processing expertise, innovation kitchen, and research and development team partner to create and provide solutions. Our excellent customer service, world-class certified food safety standards, and experienced nationwide sales force can support your business locally, be a trusted partner, and inspire endless possibilities. All right. Great commercial. And hey, listen, Kev, uh, ever since that last break, You've inspired me to go dig out my Kylie Minogue album and listen to that later. Oh, 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 so right. There you go. All right. Everyone loved Kylie back in the day. So <laughs> locomotion. Um, good stuff. Let me get to my second dish. And this dish uh, was inspired by the idea 
of taking an existing appetizer that you have on your menu and just reworking it, re-engineering it to make it into something that's a little more prestigious, can demand a little more dollar for without adding a whole lot of cost. You want to bring value to products that you already have in-house. Make them shine. Make them worth more by how you present them and what you do with them. So I'm going to talk about barbecue Korean short ribs. Um, popular, great flavor, recognizable flavor when you, when you taste a, a, a Korean barbecue sauce, very approachable and something that's popular among all uh, age groups. So what I've done is I've created them in two different ways, and I'll show you how I did it. For this particular application, I used the Jade Mountain Teriyaki sauce, and I added it to a Korean barbecue sauce, which is amazing because you get all the benefits of that teriyaki flavor combined with the Korean barbecue sauce makes just a blow away uh, finishing sauce and marinade for these short ribs. So let me uh, near, uh, narrow in here. You can see what I'm doing, a little butchery one-on-one. So this is a, Korea, uh, a short rib. Often you'll see it's called a flanken cut or a cross cut short rib. Not too thick, four bones still visible right there. And typically you'll find these as they are when they're marinated and grilled. People usually leave them whole and prepare them as they see fit. But if you want to elevate it, what I've done is I've actually taken the bones off. Very simple. Just cut right through. And you're left with three points. You're left with a beautiful piece of boneless short rib. Okay, still comes from that flanking cut. You haven't added any more cost to this because you're doing it in-house. You're butchering it in-house. So again, you haven't done anything different. Just cut a few bones off. Not extremely difficult to do, okay? So that's what I did from a prep standpoint. And I'll show you the two different methods. So here we've got some finished short ribs that I've marinated again in a Korean barbecue sauce and teriyaki, grilled them on the grill, and I'll show you how you could plate this. So again, this is the existing appetizer, so stay with me for there. So try and cut across the grain if you can, cutting through the bones, really important on this type of cut that you find the grain if you can, and cut across, okay, and I just place them and stack them on a board or a plate, whatever you see fit, like such. I'm just going to remove my glove and I'm going to garnish these. So you can place, you know, maybe a little carrot on top of each of these. You know, some radish. I love radish. A great color. You know, and then maybe just some, you know, twirly, twirly green onions. Okay, so a little appetizer, a little dipping sauce in the middle. And there you have just a really simple, easy appetizer. Korean short ribs, marinated, grilled beautifully, little dip, something to share before a meal. Nothing wrong with it. Fantastic. So how do you take this now and elevate it to something that can justify and warrant more dollars, looks great, brings value to product you already have in-house as, as, as opposed to bringing in another SKU without adding a lot of labor or grief to your operation. Grief equals problems. We don't like that in the kitchens. So what I did is I'm going to grab another board and I'm going to add some rice to the base of it. Pretty simple. Some jasmine rice at the base. Okay? Just going to press that out a little bit. And then I'm going to take some of that boneless short rib that we spoke about. Okay, same product, just boneless. Again, I'm going to cut that across the grain, however big slices you want. I'm going to start building that on top of the rice. So again, one or two depending what you like. Amy, we already talked about some height, so this is a great way of building a little more height. Love that. All right, so a nice little stack. 
we're then going to add some vegetables, pickled vegetables, which look great. You have them in house already. We're just going to add some color to the side. We've got some beans, some cucumbers, some peppers, some radish. Again, not a lot of cost there. It's stuff you already have. Okay, looking great there. And then I'm just going to finish this off with a little more of that sauce over the top, just to drizzle. And again, I'll garnish it the same way I sort of did before. And all of a sudden, you haven't done a whole lot of different, you haven't added a lot of cost. You haven't done a lot of different things to this. You've used the same product, just built it in a way that looks fantastic. Coming out, let me just back that up a bit. Coming out would definitely warrant a higher ticket because you've added rice, which is inexpensive, but looks great. You've added some height, some garnish, and some vegetables. So just a different way of looking at what you already have in house. You already have an appetizer that probably sells fairly well. Why not elevate it? Now it's a small plate. Now it's a small meal. You've added some starch. You've added some vegetables. You've kind of created and finished that trio of plate components that you like to have on and in front of you. And before I, I sign off here for the, for the next person, I just want to touch on two really quick things. And we've talked a lot about, we have on this episode, the previous two have on vegetables. And vegetables are a key component in any culinary program. The thing to remember is, if you're going to be cutting up and dicing and slicing and pickling and doing whatever, you don't always have to pay a premium for number one vegetables. Okay, there's other options out there to buy if you're simply going to turn them into a relish or a chutney or whatever you want to do. So by paying a premium for number one vegetables, it's great if the application warrants that. But if it doesn't, there's other options out there. So don't pigeon yourself into a hole of always having to buy the most perfect pepper or the most perfect apple or the most perfect carrot. It doesn't matter when you're chopping them up and doing other things to it. And the other second part about portion control is... If you don't have a scale, buy one. Because if you're going to follow a culinary program where you're portioning, and portioning is a component of your costing of recipes, you want to make sure that things are weighed and done properly. You don't want to eyeball it because then it throws the whole thing off. So buying a scale, making sure it works, <laughs> you don't want it to just be a, a piece on your counter, make sure the batteries are in it, or you've got an adapter that's not all wrangly and, and doesn't work. So a scale is pivotal when it comes to cost control and portion control. And the only way that's gonna work is if people and your staff adhere to it. So a scale, vegetables, just taking a different way of looking at uh, and helping you out behind the scenes. So those are my two dishes for today. Uh, and I can't wait to see what's, uh, what follows this. A lot of great tips there, Steve. Um, you know, I think those are some great probably reminders and uh, of things that um, to focus on uh, as operators, so. Thank you. All right, let's head over to Chef Marvin. <clears throat> My next presentation here is, is basically using sauces uh, to, to elevate and to change uh, change the uh, the progy presentations. So uh, what I did here is uh, I got some turkey breast sliced with progies did an arugula salad with uh, some garnish of, of beets and carrots and red onion and green onion. And with this one here, we're going to do a teriyaki sauce. Just portion the teriyaki, pour the teriyaki over. Add a little bit of sesame seed to the top of that. Could have been using meatballs for this, but uh, we didn't do that today. But there you go, a quick presentation, um, low cost uh, and easy to portion as was mentioned before. Uh, the progies in this case were pan fried, but again, if you were deep frying, uh, two and a half, three minutes in the fryer. So very, very little uh, labor cost and uh, so basically I've done the same thing, but once again, just re reiterating the fact that you can use all these different sauces that you already have in house, uh, blue cheese dressings, uh, whatever your your liking is. So for this one here, I'm doing a sweet chili, 
and you can see, I mean, it's no rocket science. It's very quick, easy, and product that people already have in-house. And there's the two presentations there. And the other one I'm uh, showing is a basket of our minis, Cisco minis, GMO snacks. And uh, in this case, I'm just going to drizzle a hot sauce. They could be actually tossed in hot sauce. Uh, we've actually uh, coined, coined the phrase the uh, Polish wings. Uh, we have a lot of play with the, with the uh, pierogies and the hot sauce especially in the U.S. marketplace. It's, uh, it's become a real mainstay because of the cost of uh, the wings when you can get away with using pierogies. And, of course, you can doctor them up whichever way you see fit. Put a few little bits of green onion on top. And there you go. You've got a, a quick, easy appetizer. Uh, maybe not as high end as some of the uh, other presentations today, but I think this is a fairly common common uh, presentation that could be used most anywhere. I've used a basket just to show that it doesn't necessarily always have to be served in a plate. Uh, bowls, actually, as we were speaking, I was just putting a bowl together. Uh, we've done a lot of pierogi bowls. We've actually done pierogi cob salads and uh, pierogi soups. So basically speaking, any any application from you know, the breakfast to to the dinner, and uh, also working on some uh, concepts for a dessert pierogi. So with one skew, you can try all these different applications and uh, and make the best of that. And of course, the low cost item, comfort food, everybody's into. Uh, deep fry fat uh, doesn't absorb, so it doesn't compromise the uh, as was being mentioned earlier, that canola oil being very expensive these days, that's certainly a factor as far as uh, what goes in that fryer. And, uh, and if you really want to top these up a little bit, on I'll put a little bit of ca cashews on top just to make it a little better with the sweet chili. And uh, that's my basic presentation for today. Well, I think it um, progies are uh, very versatile and I think you can use them in a lot of different dishes and you know your this particular segment you focused on the different sauces and a sauce is a, a very inexpensive way to change things up um, you know you mentioned earlier about how you know whatever your list of wing sauces are then that's what you have and that's what you do um, and then the same thing Steve had a couple sauces and where he took two sauces and combined them so instead of you know he's only making purchasing two different items to make a third instead of buying three different things. So, um, you know, I think there's a lot of different ways that you can incorporate some of those practices in, into the different dishes and using the versatile pierogi as the base. And one other thing I wanted to point out, <clears throat> and this came from a, a chef in one of the hospitals in Toronto, actually. And uh, I said, man, you go through a fair amount of product. And he said, well, yes, you know, he said, I always have 20, 30 cases in my freezer. And he said, the point there is that when I run out of my luncheon special, I can put progies on in three minutes, the boiling water, they're in, they're out. And he said, and nobody complains that I've run out of my specials. So this was his backup for for his noon specials. And, and uh, you know, whether that many restaurants are doing specials anymore, uh, I would assume they are. And if, if they wanted to try and use that as a, as a backup, I think it's... Uh, it's a real option and a good opportunity. Well, I just want to add as we move on to the next person, a great presentation. And I have to say, uh, you know, that the, a stat came up about the uh, the origins cannot be confirmed of the pierogi. But I loved your uh, Polish wing night. Uh, where I'm from in the prairies, it might be, uh, depending on the town, it might be Mennonite wing night. I think there'd be some <laughs> people that would argue Ukrainian wing night. I love it, love it, love it. Well done. Well, thank you. Let's head over to Chef Brian. All right, we're back. So I'm going to show a very easy, simple preparation, taking classic the classic uh, comfort food, French onion soup. 
So I got some onions here that I've been caramelizing uh, while the other chefs were working. So they're just about ready. I'm just going to add a little bit of flour to create sort of a roux in there. Give this a stir. And I'm going to add a little bit of beef broth. And then you have your options here. We can go with our all beef Cisco Arizio meatball that has no cheese, no breadcrumb, and a half ounce size, or our beef and chicken and a half ounce size. Both very versatile. So I'm going to use the all beef. And again, these are fully cooked, pre portioned into a half ounce size. So we're going to let these meatballs reheat in that broth. While those go, uh, I'm going to cut up just a couple slices of French bread because we're going to make this into a nice little shareable appetizer. We'll cut some thin slices, toast them off in the oven. And this is great to serve as maybe like an app appetizer to take out. So I'm actually going to put it in a takeout container. So... I'll just put my bread off to the side here. Then I have a little bit of Swiss cheese that I grated earlier. I'm just going to cover this up. And then some Gruyere cheese. Then a, a sprig of thyme and a sprig of rosemary, which we'll take out later. I'm just going to give this a quick cover, let everything melt. And then I also made a second presentation doing the exact same thing. So those, you know, more casual restaurants, higher end dining, we just layered it in a nice bowl with a nice piece of toasted bread, some meatballs on top, that same Swiss cheese and Gruyere over top. So that's another... Uh, single serve portion, whether you want to have that on your your lunch menu or your dinner menu. So this cheese has melted. And we're just gonna take take out our rosemary. And add some of those the onions, the meatballs, that Swiss cheese and Gruyere combo. And then if we want, we can take a little more time and go over the top. There you go. You got a nice appetizer that you can put on your menu. Uh, have that be a family style meal. You can make a larger portion serve uh, six, eight people or so. And then we got a couple other options using the all beef meatball. We talked about kids' meals earlier. So we made these nice little little meatball cheeseburger bites. So it's a baked meatball, nice little piece of cheese, tomato, a pickle, and serve with a little side of fries. Or we said, you know, meatball tacos. So this is our one ounce all beef uh, Cisco Arizio meatball. Just baked it off as, as wood, tossed it in some uh, taco sauce, a little bit of cojita cheese, a little corn and black bean salsa, and, and a flour tortilla. And the, the last one that I'm gonna to try to run through real quick, which is um, becoming very popular here locally, um, is a faux soup. So for this one, I'm gonna choose the, the beef and chicken meatballs. These have a very neutral flavor profile. So they're more of an all purpose meatball. Um, you know, I'd recommend them for that French onion soup application that I just showed. So I have some rice noodles that I did a little bit earlier. Just going to add them into my hot broth. And then just like the rice bowl, we have all different types of toppings to choose. We have some sautéed mushrooms, a little bit of baby bok choy, uh, bean sprouts, the jalapeno chilies, um, a little bit of cilantro. So this is real versatile. Again, you can use what you have in your kitchen. So you can go and you can make this, um, you know, if you have 
cauliflower that you had roasted off as on a part of a special and you didn't use it all, go ahead and add that in there. Or uh, maybe you had some cabbage uh, left over from a, uh, a braised cabbage dish. You certainly can use that. So I'm going to add my noodles to the bottom of the bowl. And then I'm going to take some of my, my mushrooms. I have some beef and chicken meatballs that are hot. Some baby bok choy. My broth. A little bit of our chilies, some cilantro, and some Thai basil. Uh, it's a nice, quick, fast bowl. Uh, again, labor savings. The meatballs are fully cooked. They're versatile. You know, you could have, if you would like, you could have had the the one ounce all beef meatball in this soup bowl. You could have did, uh, you know, four meatballs for a nice four ounce portion of protein, or the half ounce size, six meatballs, um, quick, quick, fast, easy preparation. Um, you know, your customers are, are not going to miss that slow roasted uh, beef. The meatballs, like I uh, hopefully was able to show you today, can be used across almost every type of cuisine, whether it's a tacos, the kids' meals, the Asian bowls, um, the French onion soup. So... And then hopefully with my Marvin, we can uh, get together someday and work on some pierogi and meatball combinations. That would be pretty good. Some good comfort food there. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Chef Brian. Chef Peter, take us home. Yo, thanks a lot, Kevin. So I just wanted to walk you through. We already talked about some of the fusion with some of the Asian and tempura and some of the Casas Lana, sort of Mexican lineup. This is about the Arizio lineup and the Italian lineup. So I have some of the Arizzo dry cured pepperoni. I also brought out the eggplant because not a lot of people are using eggplant. I want to talk a little bit about that. So of course we uh, we grilled some, uh, char grilled some eggplant to make a little bit of a, like a ratatouille. And this is going to be a carbonara fettuccine topped pizza. Okay, because pasta and pizza are, are in the top four of the most profitable items on your menu and so it's really important to make sure you have them on your menu that you're using them somehow and uh, this is just sort of a way to make some a little bit of an outrageous sort of pizza finish right so i'll just put this on the side for now but what uh, of course uh, with our uh die cut uh, brass die cut fettuccine nice and pebbled holds the sauce really really well so that's what we're using in this dish and of course we used our uh Aurizio pizza flour to make some dough to make our pizza here so this is uh, something that you can buy in a go ball. You can buy it already sheeted, but uh, I decided I was going to make this because, again, we were talking about fighting inflation. So it's very easy to make some dough. So I have some of the uh, pasta here cooked off for us. But the show, the star of the show, is the fresh, the fresh Alfredo sauce, this fresh frozen Alfredo sauce, real cheese, real cream. Easy to use, you thaw it out, you heat it up. I got some roasted garlic in mine here right now. So we're gonna put this on top of our fettuccine. And then, of course, we're gonna roll out this dough a little bit later on because what I did, of course, a little bit of some of the magic going on over here is we, we have one already in this pizza box. It's a deep pizza box. So it allows you to top your, uh, your products a little bit more. So we par baked this here with a little bit of butter, some chili flakes. You can see it's ready to go. So we would take this, we'll dress it with the pasta, pop it in the oven and finish it up. But for today, I just really wanted to make sure that you, you've seen the idea. This is basically like a garlic bread, but it's in the shape of a pizza, right? So as we get ready to do that, we have a really nice 17% uh, Arizio uh, mozzarella that we're using on the pizza because we want it to be a little stringy. This is where all the money is. And that, again, is the idea. There's no cheese on this pizza yet. So we haven't spent a lot of money here at all. So, of course, here we have our Alfredo. Nice, looking beautiful, sauced up good. It goes right here, right on that pizza. No, you didn't. Yeah, we leave it right in the middle just a little bit. Watch this. So 
you take a little bit of the mozzarella cheese, just a little bit, sprinkle it on. You don't need a lot because it's already got the cheese and everything's right in the sauce. So we have that. We had some of the chili flakes that we had on the crust. That was also important, right? So I julienne the, uh, the uh, pepperoni. So it would uh, mimic the bacon that you would see in the carbonara. You just sprinkle it on top here like this. A little bit of some roasted garlic. You know, this is definitely a date night dish. But uh, a little bit of fresh parsley. <laughs> Bring it around. Not finished yet. Because of course, when you have a carbonara, you have the raw, you have the sunny side up eggs. Okay. So again, I know that it wasn't hard. It also is not very expensive. There is only about one ounce of cheese that I used to dress this pizza, where normally you would be using eight to 10 ounces of cheese. So this whole idea of what we're doing here to, to be that sort of inflation uh, fighting uh, dish, this is definitely something that you'd be able to uh, be proud to, to sell for a, for a fairly good dollar. But I just wanted to make sure that you've seen what was going on here. Uh, Kevin, look at that. So yeah, looking I, forward, yeah. looking forward to coming and picking that up for date lunch for Come my wife and I. That up. <laughs> <laughs> on that, baby. Okay. And truly, this is something when your customers get get it home and they take it. We got a special vents in this box on the side so that our, our pizza is not getting soggy. It's a deep dish style box. It works fantastic. You open up, boom, there's everything inside ready to go, right? So the important, I love my eggs, eh? <laughs> the idea here is about value, simplicity. A little outrageous is also very important to any of the dishes that you're making at your restaurant, right? So again, that's super fantastic uh, way to be able to fight inflation, make good profitability. And uh, we're gonna wash it down with a little bit of green tea ice cream and some candied wontons. So it's gonna be a super, super dish. I'll slice it up just as we finish up. Thanks, Kev. Thanks, Chef Pete. Quick commercial, and then we'll do our wrap up. We'll see you when you get back. Craft hazelnut spread is here. With the classic taste of roasted hazelnut, skim milk, plus a touch of cocoa, perfect for a quick breakfast or an indulgent start to your day. As a decadent anytime snack, on the go, or even at the office. Or to create richly satisfying desserts, putting a new twist on your old favorites. Craft hazelnut spread is made with no palm oil and is low in saturated fat. Chocolate hazelnut spreads are here to stay, and we're one of the fastest growing dessert ingredients, growing 18% in food service versus the previous year. And with snacking still a powerful trend, the demand for chocolate hazelnut spread filled pastries remains high. Elevate your breakfast, innovate your desserts, or do both. It's the convenient new way to enjoy the taste of chocolate hazelnut. Craft hazelnut spread. We're back. Uh, we are back. Yes, I cannot believe you know this was a uh, round three, and uh, you uh, all of you did not disappoint with a lot of great ideas, a lot of uh, inspiration and tips, and um, amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you guys for having us. We're great. Thank you for having us on. And I just want to remind everybody on here, anything that seemed maybe too challenging or I can't do that or you want to know what you can substitute, all of these individuals are available as resources to you. Uh, obviously, Cisco has culinarians across the country and our business resource um, a special our, our um, category specialist. So like, please don't, I, I use the term don't suffer, but like there's no bad questions, right? However you can Absolutely. make this work for your business, folks, the, this is what gets these folks up in the morning. Oh, fantastic, lots of, uh, I learned a lot, um, you know, today, amazing. A lot of things that I'll be able to continue to share with, uh, with people going forward for sure. Great. Thanks, everybody. We're here to help. Okay. Nice, thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it all. Fantastic. Go listen to Kylie Minogue.